Hey guys, Tatiani Favors here, your tax business coach. And in this video, we're going to discuss the vital importance of conducting a post-tax season review, okay? This is video two of the post-tax season mastery series. Video one is already out. Because it's post-tax season, I felt it necessary to really give y'all the game and what to do post-tax season. So many tax professionals are like, Ricky Bobby, like, I don't know what to do with my hands, okay? Yes, that was a Talladega Nights reference, judge a mama, not me, okay? I love y'all, but no, for real. A lot of y'all are like, tax season is over. I might have a few, you know, clients sprinkling on in here and there. A lot of you all go into other endeavors like credit repair, accounting, bookkeeping, or just a totally other business during post-tax season. But um, can I submit to you also, in addition to doing whatever else you're doing, to do some background post-tax season work on your tax business so that the upcoming tax season can be even better than the tax season we just left, okay? Can we do that? And that's the reason for this channel. That's the reason for this post-tax season mastery series. It's the reason, guys. So, like I said, today we will dive into why reviewing your tax season as soon as it ends can truly transform your tax season for the better. Let's go ahead and get started, okay? So why conduct a post-tax season review? It's, in, it's essential, okay? It is essential because it helps you understand what strategies succeeded and what didn't pan out as expected, okay? The old classic case of what worked and what didn't work. Because honestly, guys, and this is the secret to business. Y'all want to know? Bring it in. You close? This is what you do in business to reach maximum success. You stop doing what doesn't work and continue and elevate what does. Boom. Microphone drop. Okay? Microphone drop. Video's over. That's it. But no, it's that simple. Business is simple. People make it complicated, but in order to figure out what went right and what went wrong, first of all, you have to do the thing. And so, of course, we just experienced a tax season, but now you have to actually put into pockets and analyze what worked and what didn't work. You have to know what worked. You have to know what didn't work in order to stop doing what didn't work and elevate and build on what did work, okay? And that is the... Essentially, that is the ultimate goal of an of the end of tax season or post tax season review is to figure those things out. OK, but listen, it's not just about looking back. OK, it's about using what you learn to improve every aspect of your operations from enhancing client satisfaction to boosting your bottom line. OK, so why conduct a post tax season review immediately, though? immediately. It's all about timeliness, okay? Because conducting this review immediately after tax season is crucial. Why? Because the details are fresh and the impact of decisions that you made during the hectic time of tax season, they are very clear, okay? Being timely in conducting this review allows you to make more accurate assessments and informed decisions moving forward. You don't want to wait until October, November, December to try to think about what happened in January, February, and March, okay? You're just happy. You just, if you wait until quarter four to try to think about what happened during last tax season, you're just so happy that you made it out. You're like, oh, tax season was great. I mean, we're here now not understanding or not remembering that, you know what, Crystal really didn't work out. She used to come to work late. She made, she messed up about five tax returns and Bobby, you know, was right there with her or Bobby was a, a superstar and he did great. And I want to hire him again. Like your ability to make accurate decisions at that time significantly reduces. Okay. Because like I said, it's not clear. The information that happened during tax season is not clear. So let's take a page real quick from the playbook of Fortune 500 CEOs, okay? Because these leaders consistently review their company's performance to strategize and adapt, 
Okay. And by adopting a CEO mindset, you as a tax professional can similarly steer your practices toward greater success and resilience. Okay. And like these top tier executives, okay, of these 500 Fortune 500 companies, you must base your strategies on solid data. It's all about data. Okay. And so this approach ensures that your decisions that you make aren't just reactive. They're not emotional. It's not because it's a Tuesday and you felt like it, but they are proactive. Okay. And they're setting the stage for sustainable growth and improved client service. That's what we all want. Okay. A lot of people start a tax business, join this industry, and just, you know, you first of all, you start as a worker bee and not with a CEO mindset, but also why not function as a, fi a, fi a Fortune 500 company? Fortune 500 com companies didn't start off that way. They started off as small businesses just like you. So in order to reach the level of success that you want, why not embody that level of success right now? Why not do the things right now that's going to get you there quicker? Okay, everybody on the internet is not, um, they might be making a little coin here and there, but it's probably not sustainable, okay? And they're not functioning as a Fortune 500 company. Why don't you do something different and from the start, come from that angle, you will see longevity and sustainability within your tax business, okay? So let's look at some key areas to review. Now, in your review, you should focus on, I have four key areas here, right? Now, of course, there are more than four, but these are key areas, so let's go over them. First, your financials, okay? First, your financials. How did you do, okay? How did your revenue and expenses play out compared to what your projections were. Don't have projections? You needed some projections. How were you able to budget and plan for your tax season? We'll get into that later on in the post-tax season mastery series on how to budget for the upcoming tax season for sure. But you need to understand, okay, what are my expenses? What's the number I'm trying to hit? So now when it comes to post-tax and you'll know if you were successful or not. Okay, next. Client feedback, okay? Client feedback is the next area to uh, to review. What are your clients telling you about their experiences? And if you don't know, have some type of survey, some type of questionnaire, get on the phone with them, ask them, you know, what can you approve on? How was their experience? Uh, what kept them coming back? Things of that nature. Client, your business, you don't have a business without clients. And if their experience was trash with your business, they're not going to come back next tax season. We want client retention strategies. We want clients to come back tax season after tax season. We don't want one-off clients. I mean, we'll take all clients, but we want to make sure that if you come here to ABC Tax Firm, then you're coming back next tax season and the tax season after that. Oh, and by the way, you're not only coming back, you're telling all your people about ABC tax firm and they're coming as well, but you'll never know that if you don't get your client feedback. Okay. Third, your operations. Okay. Were your processes efficient? Okay. Were they efficient? That's simple. Okay. Finally, compliance and risk. Okay. How well did you handle regulatory changes and how well did you manage these potential risks? OK, now, like I said, there are other areas to review. However, if you cover these four areas, then you will be well on your way to really understanding the inner workings of your tax um, business. OK. So let's get into how we go ahead and conduct an effective review. And I would say, go ahead and start by collecting data from different sources, like surveys. I mentioned that, um, give out surveys to your clients. Um, go ahead and start collecting financial reports. So if you use the bank, you know, if you have bank products, they have uh, reports, your bank account, your uh, receipts, things of that nature, um, all of your financial reports, and even feedback from your team, okay? Just collect all of that data. Then analyze that information to identify any trends, any patterns, any opportunities for improvements. That's what you're looking for. 
Also, let's get into the software of it all, okay? Consider utilizing, and especially if you did utilize certain software, um, look at their business analysis, okay? Look at their, um, look at, look at, if you use a software that specializes in business analysis, okay, or have kept up with certain data points of your business, pull those reports as well, okay? Look at the performance dashboards on that. Any feed, uh, feedback management um, systems that you may have had, okay, that can provide deeper insights to help you streamline um, the review process or to help you streamline or summarize how the tax season went for you, okay? This is, of course, if you use those type of systems. If you don't, then don't worry about it right now. And we'll cover, we'll go deeper into other systems that'll help you, but that'll be later on in the post tax season mastery series, okay, guys? So let's get started with your review, okay? First, set clear object ob objectives, okay? What do you want to review? What are your goals for this review? And it better not be, you know, that girl Tatiani Favor, she told me I need to review my tax season, so I'm gonna re review my tax season. That's great, but what about your tax season are you really trying to uncover? Set clear objectives, okay? What are you specifically looking to improve and establish clear goals that will help you focus your efforts, okay? And that will help you measure your success. And I truly encourage you to begin your post-tax season review today. Like today, it's already, we're already two weeks out, depending upon when you listen to this video, but whenever you, I don't care, even if it is October, you haven't, you, you, if you were today's years old, when you found out that you should be reviewing your tax season, every tax season, that's fine. Go ahead and review it today. Okay. Because this is an investment in your firm's future at the end of the day. Okay. By taking these steps now, you're setting yourself up for more success in a less stressful tax season, the next tax season. Okay. Okay. Again, like I said, you don't want to wait until quarter four to do all of this because your mind won't remember everything. It just won't. And so if all of this seems too complicated, all the um, the suggestions and advice that I've given about how to conduct your end of season tax review, your end of, the, your end of tax season review, then let me make it real simple for you. Go sit down somewhere, quiet and reflect on your tax season, okay? And ask yourself questions like, what went right? What went wrong? What can I improve on? What didn't I like? Just ask yourself those questions like that. I, I want to take away all of the barriers for you all to do this because it's something, like I said, it's an investment in your business that doesn't take anything but time and reflection, and for you to say, you know what, I'm going to spend an hour reflecting on my business so I can get better. It's what you do in the shadows and when no one is looking, the little changes that you make when no one is clapping for you, that really makes the difference between successful and unsuccessful tax professionals, okay? And so guys, if you need assistance, I have a free end of tax season review worksheet. Check down in the description box below. The link is there. It is free 99, okay? And you literally complete it, okay? And you will need time to complete it. Like I said, set aside an hour or so. But once you're done, you can use it as the blueprint of your elevation, the blueprint of change in your tax firm, okay? Use it to say, you know what? This is what I wrote down. This is what I need to work on. This is cool over here. Let's keep this. Let's elevate on the things that are great. Let's refine other things. Let's get, a, get, um, get away from the things that did not work. It is your personal blueprint to success. If you are honest with yourself, don't give Miss America pageant answers on this form, Okay. Be 100% honest with yourself. That's the only way your business can truly elevate and grow, okay? So guys, be on the lookout for more videos from the post-tax season mastery series. And 
if you follow my guidance during the off season, okay, you will be successful come next tax season, period, like the kids will say, all right? Until next video, guys, I'll see you later. Peace.